All right. Well, welcome back. Episode four of the After Hours Podcast. It is a very, very big day in the deer hunter world. November 1st has arrived. and We have a lot to talk about. We got a backlog of things to talk about. But we're going to go back to October in this one with Gavin. Mr. Tagged Out over here. Got a lot to oh discuss God. there. Mike <laughs> came out of retirement from the camera side of things. Mike laid it down. It all. Looked pretty good. Mm-hmm. We're trying. Yeah. We're trying. Yeah. And Rye, you're fresh. I guess off. I officially had the practice last year with Bella. And uh, <laughs> Gavin was reminding me that today. He said, you know, you, you, you filmed Bella last year. And I was like, I guess I did. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and that's something that might be coming up a little bit yes. more. So. And then, Rye, you're fresh off a trip down with Mr. Owen Riegler and had a pretty good hunt. But you'll have to listen to that on the next podcast. But where should we start, guys? On the front end here, we could talk about November, what you saw today, who who's out in the woods. Yeah, we went out. Did you go out? We did. But if you got five hours, I can tell you what. <laughs> it's just it's, so intriguing to hear about the drama would you like to start there but yeah uh, yeah, 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 yeah 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 that's yeah, awesome right. yeah. well let's just uh break the ice on the fact that if you follow along the chase um which is our every once a week video and then six videos a week with all the team members but we got permission on a really awesome river property and that would have been last week put some cameras out found some really nice bucks and within 48 hours of posting that first video, it didn't work in our favor. And to to keep it short, we lost the permission. And the family asked that we uh, pull our stuff, and that was that. So that kind of sent us into a scramble of – it took us to a general area where there's some really good public land. And we wanted to try to access some of it by the river. And so the first thing that led us down the road of was this canoe that my buddy was kind enough to offer. And we went uh, yesterday and well, I should, I should back up a little bit. Once we lost the permission, we went to the uh, public that I talked about and walked very far in, in the middle of a thunderstorm, put up some cameras, the wettest I've literally ever been. I mean, it was like wetter than if you took a shower in your clothes. I mean, Evan's here. You know, if you guys are watching this, this is Evan. Uh, he's an intern with us this year. But I've taken him. Hi, Aaron. I'm like, I've taken him into some questionable situations this last week. And I, it's amazing he's still here, frankly. Um, <laughs> but following the thunderstorm day, we put up two cameras. And going into yesterday, which was the 31st, we planned on hunting there yesterday morning. and ended up getting a phone call from one of the team members that is named Devin Wills, who shot a giant. And so we bailed on the hunt, (laughs) went on the recovery. And by the time we were wrapped up there, I mean, we got back to town probably what, 1.30, 2 o'clock, somewhere in that range. And so we went and located a canoe. It's So it's a new canoe is what they're called. I don't know how else to explain it other than like it's a kayak canoe. And felt like we could fit two guys, went and bought a trolling motor, battery, the whole bit. And we're like, we should probably go do a test run on this. Just better not do that in the dark. And we were like, it's just looking back as I'm saying this out loud, it's just what a waste of time. But more importantly, what a stupid plan. Like it had zero chance of ever working. It was four miles roughly to get down there. Um it didn't work. The canoe, we sat in it right away, started to take on water. So ax that plan. Call Caleb. Caleb is gracious enough. He says, dude, use my boat. It's ready to go. So we get the boat. I mean, I drive back to Southern Iowa. So I think we spent probably, I don't know, roughly six and a half, seven hours driving to Southern Iowa yesterday to get different things. Mm-hmm. And so we get back late last night, have the boat. We're all excited about it. On our way down there yesterday, though, we finally got pictures of the big deer and the other nice buck that's on the property. And so we hunted there this morning, Um, saw one of the good bucks that we filmed in the summer. And our plan was then to get, so we got down, went and got the boat and the water is just too low. I mean, I think we made it probably three and a half miles, um, which for where we had to put in with the bigger boat, 
it was probably closer to five or six by the time we were just going to get there. And I mean, we just kept hitting sand and I don't know. I mean, I was in my skivs pushing the boat for quite a bit. Every time it was, it sucked. And we turned around. Um, And so here's another interesting thing. This is just a reminder to always be sure we, where we finally called it quits showed up public land on, on Onyx. And it was a different color. It wasn't exactly the same as, you know, your typical public land. And so that already kind of made us a little weary, but it showed up as, you know, public hunting. We had seen that there were some signs that said bow hunting, you know, access, yada, yada, yada on the spot. And we were like, screw it. This is where we were supposed to be. Let's just get out and go. Let's just do it. This is where we're meant to be. I'm like, nah, something feels off about this. And luckily I looked it up because it was a doe management zone only. It's a doe hunt only. And you had to have a special permit to even go hunt this place. And so we, we never did get out of the boat. And so then we licked our wounds, turned around, made it back up the river. And by that time, we finally, I think we went and hunted another piece of public nearby. Um, I think we hunted for two hours, saw a little buck at last light and the other nice deer on the big deer farm daylighted again. So we are getting all the signs to just hunt the place we put in all this effort. We should probably just hunt it. It's been a bad 48 hours. I'm super happy for the team. It's been a great 48 hours. Millis Whitetail, Team Josh and Evan, making the wrong choices. Man. So. What the God. That's frustrating. But it's just a lot of wasted time. And just, Where those things happen, usually there's some kind of prize at the end. So We had fun most Keep of the going. way. <laughs> I just Mike kept telling it. myself, I'm like, Mike would make this look so much easier. I'm like, <laughs> you know, I can't do this. So the river didn't have like a channel in it that you could keep the boat in, huh? You kept hitting the sandbars. And I mean, we tried to see, yeah. I mean, like we tried to follow, you know, the deep edges and then yeah. places literally where it was like at my ankle. Yeah. And I mean, after walking in that thunderstorm as far as we got, just in boots, duh. <laughs> right. Like, you're probably unlikely you were going to get a full boat down there, but so we the tried. The original it. plan of like hiking to the river and just crossing it is it's too long of a hike. That's not that it's too long of a hike. I think we would just, I need to find something. I don't own waders, so I'd have okay. to buy waders or of some sort. Um, you know, maybe just, after that rain, it'll go down enough now, like back to shallow where you can like find a place to walk across in knee boots. But very possible, minus the rain we've got coming. I would be right. Sure. That's, yeah, it's gonna be high like, this week. I don't know if you guys looked at the like seven to 14 day forecast, but it's a lot of rain. A lot of rain. All this so, rain we didn't get for the last two months. It's here she comes. So, yeah. uh, but perfect. that's enough about me. That That's just, yeah. I mean, it, like you said, I mean, it was, we tried. You know, yeah, we went from one plan to the next to the next, and all of a sudden, I wasn't as mad at him, Mike. You're, you're <laughs> exactly, yeah. You're collecting experiences. These yeah. are these are things you'll talk about. We'll talk about it. <laughs> if, hey, remember that time like, you tried so hard? <laughs> I told Evan, I was like, all it'll take is one good hunt, and if oh, we kill the big exactly. deer, if we kill the big deer, I'm gonna get like a little, uh, you know, like you could put the turkey stones in those little vials. I'm going to go get some sand from the river. I'm going to put it back in his mouth. There you go. Hanging sand. around your neck for all future hunts. Memory. I think we it's interesting. Them. There's a reason there's a, a good age class of bucks out there in that public stuff, right? I mean, it's just a it difficult place to get to. Yeah. But you also yeah. got, you know, the big deer and, and the other good buck out there. So it makes sense to spend time out there when they're being active out there. Mm-hmm. So, so Gavin and I went to the river bottom farm this morning um, and sat the pinch for the first time this year, which I've, I've honestly been dying to go sit there uh, just because it's such a, it's such a fun place to sit. I don't think and you've ever so tried we, there, have you? No, I can't think of one, but we, we keep trying, you know, just like Josh, we just keep trying. And, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so anyway, we, we had a, we had a great sit. We got in um, and I mean, geez, I don't know if we didn't do the interview like two hours into the hunt because we had deer under us basically the whole time. And we started out with the classic movement coming from, you know, north to south back into the, into the uh, bedding. And 
I could see antlers and I, I see, you know, this buck kind of, I saw a doe first and I could tell there's a buck behind her. And, uh, th this buck, Tony, fat Tony, I could see his big base kickers. And I mean, I got a glimpse of him through the brush, basically. And I was like, it's Tony. And of course I hear Gavin go, no, you know, <laughs> this deer is so stout. I mean, it's just unbelievable. I was, I was talking with Owen, uh, this evening and, and we were talking about the hunt. I was like, it's like, it's like a herd bull out West. I mean, he had seven antlers with him and they had three or four other bucks that were like walking towards him and, or just they'd see the does and they'd be like, Oh, and they go like trotting over there. And then they'd see Tony and be like, uh, never mind. And they just walk <laughs> off, you know? And uh, I was like, man, he's the old herd bull. He's just got his harem and he's, he's, he's happy. And, uh, they never came closer than 80, but, um, you know, he just was out there corralling them and, and they were feeding and they were very peaceful, but, uh, we got to watch them for a while. And then we had a couple of two and three year olds and a couple other bucks and, uh, does and a couple of fawns. I mean, they've stayed under us all morning. Basically we, we got down at what, 11, 15. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, we had movement all day. We just basically had to get some work done and I wanted to make a switch to the new farm. So we got a string of Southeast winds coming. And so we switched over to the new property and got a stand hung for a Southeast where we can see that whole big bottom that I've talked about a few times. And, uh, it's a great tree. It's a nice red Oak, got good cover in it. We can see a ton of country and, uh, I'm really looking forward to the morning sit. We, we made a little sit tonight. We filmed the four year old 10 that we filmed a couple of nights ago out there. We had another buck come in on us while we were actually hanging the stand. And so didn't get a great look at him, but, um, it was, it was otherwise relatively slow this evening, but I'm really looking forward to the morning. You know, there's, there's, um, you know, these mornings right now seem to be good and we can see so much country. I think there's going to be some cruising down that bottom. So I'm going to go check it out. Should be right. fun. Well, Rye, I mean, you had an amazing morning on, but frankly, we should an probably amazing like past three days for the record. Well, tell us about it without telling us the whole thing about it. <laughs> well, that's a summary, right? What's the spark notes? Owen and I invented a new bow shooting game for the oh, for competition. We were okay. playing tic-tac-toe with uh, shooting bows. And big part of this story, and really the only part of the story that matters, uh, I beat Owen the first round. I, I know. I know. I you gonna say that without the man and, being in here? Well, and then we, well, no, I'm gonna tell the <laughs> first time that had to be the emphatic, like the emphatic blanket statement. Then we did best two out of three, and I lost the other two. So, <laughs> yeah, I did actually win the whole shoot off. But he, uh, he then told me he switched releases midway because he shot his bow in with the other release, and he just picked the one up for first round. So he didn't even have his <laughs> release he shot in with. So. <laughs> Uh, so we didn't hunt the first night. We got all that rain. The next morning we went out and sat in a blind because of the wind. Uh, it was extremely windy just on the hilltops and he was just like, want to be safe. We sat in a blind and we had saw one deer and a turkey and got a call from Devin and we rode up, met you up there. And that was fun, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and then that evening got to go out and hunt death row for the first time. That was pretty freaking awesome. I, uh, you know, I mean, just like that's a storied place. It's just like the pinch, Mike. Like, and the, yeah, it's kind of. I was thinking about this last night, so I went to bed around eleven o'clock. I'm just laying in bed, and it's like I've got to hunt the pinch and death row with Owen Riegler and Mike Reed. Like, not many people can say that. You know, that's pretty, <laughs> pretty special. So, um, that's kind of like when you ask like the summation of my weekend. Like, that's it. It's just like nostalgic almost. So, yeah. I don't that's know. Awesome. How much and fun do you have sitting with Owen too, right? I mean, that's just a good time. It's true. And like I never realized this in the walnut stand, but like most of the time the cameraman stand is behind the tree when Mike and I have done it. Well, the walnut stand, you're on the front. So, and walnut trees this time of year, not that many leaves on it. So I'm just standing there against the tree, just like, I'm going to get busted. It's going to happen. <laughs> never got busted. Three days hunting with Owen. I felt good. So I built your legacy, man. That's I, it's, it's true. It's not much uh, good. And then we went out for a little hunt this morning. We saw one deer, and uh, that's where Owen's going to pick up the story next week. There you go. There you go. <laughs> it's, man, the last few days have been a great string. I mean, it's it's here. You know, I think that, uh, you know, I guess 
before we jump into your story, Gavin, because I mean, that's why we're all here. But if you were going to key on something in the morning and something in the evening, who or what, who wants to take this over? But if you got a guy that's looking to listen to this and go over the next five days, what do I need to focus on? How would you break that down? I want to hear Mike Reed's answer here. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think this has probably been said a bunch of times, and I think it's good to repeat it, particularly for people who are new to it. But, um, you know, my favorite place to hunt these times, this time of year when it's pre-rut, transitioning to rut, you're getting your first does is is pinches and funnels, right? And er areas that deer are naturally traveling between doe bedding areas are from feed to bed early in the morning and where you can pinch them down if you're archery hunting, um, where there's a lot of going to be a lot of day-to-day -day travel, right? Or the downwind side of a bedding area, if you're in a, um, a big timber, you know, you just put your time in because this time of year, if you get a hot doe coming by, you're going to see pretty much every buck, buck in the woods, you know? And then in the afternoon, we transition to sometimes I like to sit like this, this afternoon, we sat a, a more of a morning spot, but you know, you can sit, you hunt the does, right? You, uh, hunt food sources where you think the does might be visiting and, uh, that should catch the bucks coming out and checking those does. Mm -hmm. Those are kind of high overview statements. We can yeah. elaborate, but so, yeah, I mean, it's what I saw on the cameras yesterday. I mean, I think you're, you hear it talked about the scraping activity is going to start to fall off, which one thing I will be interested to see with all the rain we're going to have is if maybe that has a little bit of an anomaly to it. It might not, but, um, you know, all the cameras that I've had that have fired off have been afternoons and, you know, sensibly there's food nearby and that's where the does are going to be, you know, and tonight we, where we went, I mean, every, you know, 150 yards, we kept going. I was like, why are we doing this? We're getting further and further away from the food. And it's not always further is better, you know, when you're hunting, at least on like the public land mentality is like the farther away I am, the better, but the best sign, the best photos we've got, we got a mature buck yesterday in daylight. It was fairly close to where we're parking. And the, you know, big thing is there's a cut cornfield right there that they're yep. working on. And it's like, you know, play it while you can, the food card in the evenings. And I mean, if you can beat them back to bed somehow, fantastic. But you know, as you get further and further into November, those does get a little bit more shy to go into those big ag, you know, food sources in daylight because they're continuously harassed. But I think it's great hunting ahead. I mean, I, like you said, Mike, it's said all the time, but hey, can't hurt to hear it again. And with all these southeast winds and rains, I'm, I'm very anxious to hear what guys choose to do. Um, I think tomorrow morning, I'm personally going to take the hunt off. I'm going to let him go. And I'm going to try to get caught up with somebody. We just got to get caught up with all these kills we got, man. It's like when it rains, it pours. I and mean, it's been pouring in a great way. Yeah, that's so. right. But the flooding started with you, Gavin. You and Mike. You guys just made short work of the, uh, the one-two punch of Vinny and the eight. So where do we start? Yeah, no, I mean, we... We had talked about it, but it's like Mike and I have a decent track record. I mean, going back to 2022 with Kelsey, that was that took one hunt, and uh, I still feel bad for stealing that from Rye, that moment, and uh, and then a couple hunts in Vinny, and then a couple more hunts in this eight. So I mean, it's it's been awesome. I mean, I've been filming Mike a little bit this year, and it's been it's been a lot of fun. I mean, we have a great time in the tree, and just been enjoying it a lot. But um, you know, there's, there was that eight that was obviously in the Vinny kill. I mean, he was certainly uh, an aggressive type buck. I mean, I've never seen a deer do that to a tree. I mean, I felt bad for the poor tree, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like that thing. I mean, it was, it was wild. So if you haven't checked that hunt out, definitely do that. Cause that is some of the craziest footage, but right. anyway, so we, we had obviously seen a Mike had, you know, kind of mentioned that he's been all over the place camera wise i mean just just one of those bully type bucks just kind of going all over and doing his thing and um that morning we had actually kind of been in there this is the small peninsula on the river farm you yeah, guys have encountered what kelsey day, with, exactly what day yeah. october 28th okay yep. yep and you guys had encountered kelsey i want to say on the 27th of 2022 so i mean you 
you guys have made lots of hunts obviously in there and everything and it's a great it makes for a great morning stand not just because of the awesome sunrises but you know just sets up well close by bedding deer coming back from ag fields that type of thing and, and one of the uh, few southeast spots i got set up yeah that's a good morning spot you know i don't have a lot of southeast spots i mean i don't love east in the wind but you know and without hanging because i'm kind of anti-hanging hunt right now <laughs> i was like where can we go for a southeast i was like ah the pond set and uh, we do always have good sets out of that stand it seems like yeah no i can certainly knowing ha having gone through all this footage many many times i can certainly attest to that but yeah. um no as far as uh the hunt i mean we started off like pretty hot i mean it seemed like there was a hot doe in there on the other side of the river this set is pretty close to the river right there and we could see on the opposite sandbar and there was the buck at first light and then there was another buck i think i don't think i got footage of him and then there was that that four-year-old six by five that um mike said he's gotten quite a few pictures of and he was in there corralling a, a doe like a cowboy corralling a a steer or whatever i mean it was crazy just like you know full tilt running and i mean you just don't see that very often and you know, that in it in and of itself was just like an awesome experience yeah on an open sandbar i mean it's just that's just fun you know he keeping keep it pinned and, against the water yeah oddly enough it's the same sandbar that i swam from for prodigy a few years back so we <laughs> were right. kind of talking about that i was like well you know we we came over here and we were looking over there. I was like, probably you got stuck in this log jam. And you're like, yeah, I was standing right there when I swam across. And then all of a sudden you hear rock, 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 and the things they're running up and down. And I was like, holy moly. And then periodically we turn around and look on our side of the river. It's like, oh, here comes a deer. They they were they were entertaining us for sure. So yeah. our southeast wind, is that gonna blow right into the, the river then? Are you close yeah, to just, the bank? Is that how you access? How are you getting into that peninsula without, you know? So we we take the bikes, mode lane, all the way to the river. And then I've got a mode lane that comes down that river uh, bend, basically. We dump the bikes, and then we can sneak along the river bank to the stand. And basically, if the peninsula kind of juts off to the west, I'm at the north side of the neck. And so that southeast wind just goes straight over the river. And we're... We're, I don't know, maybe 50 yards from the river, maybe, maybe 60 um, from the bank. And it's just, it took me a long time to kind of figure out which tree I wanted to get in. And it's, it's not perfect. I mean, some deer can get uh, between you and the river, but there's an old pond right there. And then there's a mowed lane that comes in kind of right in front of the stand. And there's some topography change there. And so all the different movement patterns make me pick the tree we're in. And obviously in the morning with rising thermals, we tend to do pretty well i mean even when the deer come down wind of us uh they usually don't spook usually they catch us moving if they spook <laughs> the <chance. laughs> i told gavin that morning so we were we had hunted in the poseidon set the day before and i didn't even bring my bow because we got this buck tony right and i'm like uh i'm like man if you want to shoot tony like let's go try to kill tony and so we went in there there's a couple other bucks, this eight and this other 10. There's a couple other bucks that are five plus that, you know, he's like, man, I'd, I'd love to shoot him with my bow. So I was like, well, we're going to go try to see Moss and see some of these other bucks, but let's bring your bow and be ready. And um, yeah, that we were talking about which stand to put him in because some, some stands you can't shoot that well out of the cameraman set. Well, this one, I was like, the way these deer have been coming through this pond when it's dry, like you're probably being left-handed, you're better off in the cameraman set. And so we ended up going kind of standard setup where I was in the shooter set and he was in the cameraman set. And it worked perfectly. I mean, every deer that came in bow range, they all came basically on our path to the stand. Not, not, not exactly. We get a little closer to the river, but they come from the central timber through the pond and then up by the stand. And, uh, and it just worked out perfectly when it came to 15 yards. And so you are meeting deer back to bed from the ag field, you figure? And yep. with that mowed lane, I mean, yeah, I, I've heard you and Noah talk about a nauseam, but getting away with ground scent just with those minor details, prepping yeah. the lane in the summer. It's a huge deal, mowed lane, man. Not brushing up on vegetation, right? You got rubber boots on that you do – careful scent control on your boots right you're not getting out of your truck at the gas station and this kind of stuff you know your your boots are 
um, scent free. And then, you know, if they're, if you're not rubbing up on vegetation, I mean, I, deer, you just watch them walk. I mean, on a morning like this morning, you might not get away with it where the air is real heavy and there's a dense fog and that your scent just kind of sits on the ground. But the vast majority of mornings, we just try to get in there quiet. We use electric bikes, you know, we get in no lights. We're just zipping down mode lanes, get, get close to the stand, sneak in quietly and, and contacting as little as possible. I mean, the whole river forms bedding, right? I mean, there's deer everywhere. There's food everywhere, you know? And so I try to just minimize noise and lights and slip through there. And like, even that morning we're riding the bikes and I heard, I could hear a deer kind of trotting and trots a little ways and it stops. And we just kind of take our time and sneak through there. You don't spook them like you think you do. Yeah. And then we just, there's a lot of, I avoid the ag fields, right? The d- big destination ag fields. I I will go through the center of the farm on a bicycle because I'm assuming the deer are out in the big ag. And so, uh, and then just, they slowly filter their way back in. Yeah, I think that that's, that would be a huge takeaway, you know, if you feel like, because we get that question so much. How are you hunting the pinch? How are you getting to this spot? I don't understand sure. how you're going about it. It's like, well, you're not taking the easiest way. You know, I think right. that that's something that <clears throat> watching how you adjust based on the hunt you're going on and the time when you're going on, it makes a big difference. So I we talk about the pinch all the time, but it just before we get it, into any set. Show, yeah. It, it's well, this one sounds a lot like it's a similar setup. It's similar. It's not as good. Like the pinch, I feel like I can approach so perpendicular where I don't, I mean, the deer, the way the deer movement is, I mean, I can just come at it straight from perpendicular, get in my tree. This, we overlap some. And yeah. and so, you know, in the wrong situation, like they might get your ground scent or something like that. But so the pinch is a little more foolproof, uh, plus the movement through the pinch is just more predictable. But in general, when people ask me that question, I say it's so property specific. You know, where do your deer bed? Where do your deer feed? Right. And then where are you parking and and what's your best route? You know, you're trying to avoid interaction in the dark and then hopefully intercepting them heading back to bed. And there's it's it sometimes it's counterintuitive, but obviously it comes to experience of learning a property. Mm hmm. I was going to say that's been kind of an eye-opening thing just since we've been hunting uh, this this little stint here, Mike, is like you've got those mode lanes and we've got the Kaufman bikes and we've been using those a lot. And you almost, like you like you alluded to earlier, you have certain lanes where you're going through the farm when you're expecting in the morning the deer to still be out on the fields. And you've got certain lanes that go on the perimeter of the farm where you're expecting them to be in the heart of it, bedded down, yeah. going to be coming out. So it's just been like, wow, every little detail has kind of been accounted for there. You know, it's it's been eye-opening for sure. So um, we try, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> What's it like, Gavin, to be bow in hand, river farm, hot seat? I'll tell you what was the craziest was when I was in the hunter stand when we hunted the Poseidon set the, the previous morning. It was, that was strange. But, <laughs> uh, no, um, it's it's a pretty cool feeling. I mean, I I said it to you, Mike, many times. I mean, I couldn't be more grateful for the opportunity. I mean, it's, it's been a pleasure getting to film me for the times that I have and just being out there on the farm and being in that, that cool of a place when it comes to deer hunting is, is just a privilege and definitely grateful for that. But, um, yeah, no, I mean, like you said, the, this, the cameraman setup worked great for where the deer were coming in to that set that morning. And, um, especially being left-handed finally left being left-handed actually makes my life easier. So (laughs) no, um, we we entered it into the equation. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, he, uh, basically there was, we were watching the deer out on the sandbar and there was a younger 10 that kind of came through the pond where there, this, this movement pattern that Mike's been talking about came through and he was munching on some brows or whatever he was doing look back over to the river, their deer working off, whatever. And then we look back and there's a doe coming through the pond. And Mike was thinking, Mike's been on a doe mission all year. I mean, he's just, he's just got the, the trigger, itchy trigger finger, but. Um, got work to use. Yeah. So he's thinking about shooting her and then he, he kind of made the mental note and I could hear him with the headphones on. I was like, let's just wait and see what's behind her. If there's anything behind her. And sure enough, I mean, 10 seconds, 15 seconds later 
homeboy pops out. You just see a big old neck on the edge of the pond. Yeah, and, naked uh, eye. You're like, yeah. I don't know what what he has on his head, but look at that neck. That's a deer. Yeah, that's a big deer. Yeah. And yeah, it was that eight, and he really kind of just took his time from there. I mean, he he worked through the pond, came up the uh, you know the edge of the pond onto the level ground, and um, I just kind of hung out there for a while. And so we were talking. Do you want to shoot him? Yeah, I was. I, I, it was kind of hard to communicate in that tree, and so you would ask me if I wanted to shoot him, and I don't think you heard me answer. And so you said, "I just you just saw me picking up my bow, and you're like, <laughs> it's happening." Yeah, yeah. I'm uh, just grabbing the A1 off the hook. I'm like, okay, yeah. start rolling. I was like, I think yeah. that's a yes. Yeah. yeah. And you mentioned they were kind of like, uh, they were kind of hanging out there, but I, they could hear the commotion across the river, I think is mm-hmm. what was happening. It's like, yeah. he, he kind of looked at that 10, the doe looked at that 10, the young one on our side, they, she kind of paused, the eight came up behind her. 10 saw who was coming behind the doe, walked off. He was a beautiful young 10, honestly. Um, but then when the eight popped up on the bank, you could hear them grunting and running around on the other side of the river still. So he kept looking over there. And of course, I didn't want him to go over there, but he was more uh he was more fixated on the doe. And that doe actually she followed, did she follow the path of the 10? I think she basically did. Yeah, she didn't she didn't come too close to the tree. Yeah. Yeah, yeah she stayed out at about 25, 20, 25 and kind of kept moving and he was he wasn't like on her on her he was still moseying doing whatever sniffing stuff doing just whatever and you know he like they do it was a good i think the clip is like a good four or five minutes before he actually comes in and i shoot him and so he's just hanging out and finally starts to make his way out into the opening where i can shoot and i thought he was going to follow right behind the doe but he actually comes closer to like 15 yards and um again like five minutes had passed at this point draw back and stop him and that was that Ended up, back, that five minutes yeah this is what we talked about before we got here yeah and if you go back to 2023 obviously you have talked you know a couple times about how impactful it was for you and just experiences and what you had learned what changed over the last 365 days for that five minutes to just be like cool as a cucumber ready to go i wouldn't say that yeah i was like oh that what happened <laughs> I, mike saw my arrow you see the arrow in the six by five kill if you go back and watch that dragos took a clip of that i mean mike saw my arrow i i get real shook up um <laughs> i'm the t- yeah exactly i'm the type of person it's much more helpful for me to like I get that big adrenaline spike right at the beginning and then it just kind of stays there and it takes me a minute to like really slow down a little bit. And so that really helped him hanging out there really helped just in and of itself. It was the same thing with the six by five last year. He just was feeding for a while, was able to just call myself all these things. So, you know, that's, that's a big thing for me personally. Um, Obviously it doesn't always happen that way and you still have to be able to go through your, shot process and and think rationally and all these things but um you know it was on the last podcast where we kind of dove into mike's shot process with the vinny kill and everything and that was really eye-opening to me i've had numerous discussions with owen owens obviously an archery guru and just like spending some time doing more research online just looking at what different people's processes are and figuring out what works best for me i think that that can't be understated enough just listening to a lot of different people and figuring out what works best for you and um, spent a lot of time in the off season at the end of the day, just shooting continuously. I mean, that's for me as a, again, personally, I do so much better when I've been practicing a lot consistently and just getting that muscle memory. Um, I don't know, just having that, that process, that, that checklist, so to speak in your head, just like really nailed down takes out a lot of the guesswork. It just makes it more automatic of a process. And so, I mean, I think all of those different things, but, you know, Mike, one thing you really talked about that was impactful to me on that last podcast was when you're, when you're, there's a deer hanging out there for a while, it's easy to let your mind just start going crazy and and let it race and whatever, but you just have to focus on what the deer is doing. Like, from an anatomical standpoint, what his body language is, all these different things, just 
staying in the moment right there rather than being up in your head and all these things. I don't, I don't know if I'm explaining this very well, but um, you're, finding, you're finding things that channel that energy into focusing more micro tasks and exactly even just the spot of like this is what that point right there on his body is where i'm going to shoot that's like just fixating on that um so all those things are going through my head and you know at the end of the day i didn't make a perfect perfect shot i mean it was it was a double long mike had mentioned that it probably clipped some sort of uh blood vessel possibly the aorta because there was blood spray like crazy and you know you generally get that on some sort of um you know blood vessel hit but um still made a double lung hit and he went down within 100 150 yards i mean it was great it blood was trail. solid yeah great yeah. blood trail one I you mentioned that you know people don't realize how where they are is you know under the spine i mean you got a good chunk of tissue on top of the spine then you got your spinal column your vertebral bodies and then they are to and then the lungs and just when they are close to the tree and we're high up you have a high entry you know, on a lower exit. And so, uh, you know, just, I mean, obviously I didn't even look, we gutted him and we moved on, but I was just saying the blood trail didn't look like just the double lung, right? And the entry point was high. And so I was like, I bet you, I bet you cut it just cause it, there was just blo so much blood, but, uh, it was like a heart shot, you know, but, um, we, we know it wasn't a heart shot. It was kind of just behind the heart. It was mm -hmm. a super effective, slightly quartering away did the trick yeah so that that was that was a really really good feeling of just like okay all this really kind of paid off in this moment and again obviously some backstory to what got me up to that point but again just just some some good feelings there obviously really grateful again for being able to harvest a great buck and um he certainly got me shook up for sure i mean we called you guys not you know five minutes after and i was still you know i get all all loosey-goosey <laughs> it's just nothing like shooting a mature buck right it's just like there's you yeah, still old bucks that are coming in there with these giant bodies it's just like it's just a lot of fun yeah that's what you work all year for i mean whether yeah. it's mike you in the office take your vacation gavin you and chase november i mean it's like watching what you guys pulled off in the matter of eight days you know it's just like efficiency is at a very <laughs> high level with this duo i mean when we got the call i was just me and Ryan were just smiling ear to ear i mean it's it's just really awesome to see you be successful again man i mean and mm -hmm. i don't know i don't know what to say other than that i mean it's just you work and it's cool awesome. too to be the same eight the same eight that we saw in the vinny hunt i was like man that's the that's that same eight just doing what he's doing just running around that farm and so uh super you cool feel like you opened up something for this three and a half year old or now the four and a half year old 10 to look alike yeah i it's sure hope so i mean on. i i think tony's one of our biggest uh bucks that we really need to get off that property just that deer is covering he, he's i mean we saw him this morning just ruling the roost and he's going to places he's never been before i mean last year he never would go north and you know dk is gone and a bunch of these other bucks are gone and he's you know, he's like top dog right now. And so uh, thinking about some of these other bucks, you know, that we want to keep around that are four, you know, I, I could definitely envision him running them off. And so uh, hopefully, hopefully we can, we can get him down. Yeah. Right. So I knew somebody was going to say it. <laughs> I mean, what? <laughs> I'm just saying I, man. Are yeah. Curious? Mike may have made mention of of that in the interview this morning. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh. It's all good. It's all good. No, nah, it's we're awesome. Gonna see, we, we're gonna see if we can't get old Bell on him. Wouldn't that be a wouldn't that be something? Yeah, that would. Yeah. I, I think I mean Bell's been shooting lights out. She's shooting the RX eight. Uh, 45 pounds. I mean, she's drilling tax. I still don't know that I want her shooting too much further past 20. Um, I mean, maybe 25, but 20, 20 and in would be really good. And so, you know, and we sat the pinch this morning and I was like, man, it looks like late season in there that with these high winds and all this rain we got, there is no foliage. And so yeah. 
we could see everything, but you're super exposed there. And so I was trying to think of places on the river farm that we might be able to get her in close bow range. And I'm not, I'm not sure I've come up with a good one yet. So uh, either we'll hang some sets or we'll, I've got a spot on the home farm. I could put her where we had our decoy hunt the other day, that spot, at least that sets up good for a Southeast anyway. Yeah. So she, we're excited. We're gonna try to get her out this weekend and uh, see if we can't get her her first bow deer. She killed her first bow turkey this past spring and uh, I'm really hoping that she can get a deer down. That's awesome. Rye, you're going out in the morning with Abby, sounds like. We gotcha. are going to. Y'all are hitting the new farm, the new southeast set. I'm going to let this guy loose because I got to catch up on some work, and I think we're going to try to get into the big deer property tomorrow night. So, Wait. Where are you going? I hope I'm, that you guys can have some success over there. Are you maybe. bringing a decoy? Are you thinking about a decoy or anything like that? Just be, being as open as this? We talked about it. It definitely was set up well. Yeah. It's not so much that I don't think the situation sets up well for it. It's just the attention it'll bring to being there. I've I've gone out of my way to park my truck, but not within distance. We just had some you yeah. know, back with us, you know, when we've been there. So I think it's definitely viable. I think especially it's so strange, man. It's like and it gives you guys it goes back to like that other deer. I mean, he's all over acting just crazy, like a four and a half year old would, you know, just running around, scraping, doing everything. And it's like big deer never got him in the scrape once yet he seems to be if he's as old as we think he is yeah. it's almost like he has this like methodical approach he just knows where to be when to be there and doesn't work too hard to do it right. and i just think we're and we're just he's on the hurt. edge. yeah exactly we're just on the edge of where he is i mean what's crazy you know we've lost him i think we've gotten what three sequences of photos of him since september when we got permission on the piece and there's a camera that I put up the other day. We shifted them around and I, I wish I could have been filming Evan because when I was like, dude, we need to put a camera right there. He just looks at me. And he's like, what? Like, really? You think so? And I was like, yeah, like it's going to get stolen probably. But like, this is, this is God. He's got to be coming somewhere on this. And I'm like, until we'll move this thing until we figure out which one he's doing it on. And sure enough, that's the one that we've gotten. All these bucks that are like, man, they don't live anywhere close. They're just all using the same trail. Yeah, that's um, So it's, I think we're in the game. We're just like in the middle of everything. You know, like southeast of us, great bedding. Tons of things to preoccupy them. To the northwest of us, kind of the flip. And we're just a tree line in the middle. So, I mean, it's, it's kind of like I said, we're today. What more signs do we need to just, stop going somewhere else <laughs> doing everything up just go sit where we know we need to be like the stands we've got in there like they're walking by them you know what i mean it's it, it the setup <laughs> is there all the setup just trying to stop outsmarting ourselves yes that's just, good listen to the signs that's i love it <laughs> yes you say it stop being an idiot <laughs> yeah, i love the adventure i love the adventure i love the story i can't wait for you to be successful Thanks. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, Good it's job, great son. time. It, it's seriously, I mean, the, the floodgates are opening for everybody right now. I mean, Devin and Owen got their own individual stories to tell. And they're both great bucks. I mean, Rye, you, from what I saw, just a short clip, hunt looked beautiful. Brand new bow. First first bow I'm aware of. That's, you know, that's not true. One of the first whitetails shot with the new bows. Might be the first one with that particular model, but just exciting times all around. I mean, this is, we could have 30 bad days in a row. And it's so funny when we got the call from Ryan Owen this morning, I just got done rattling. And I was like looking at Evan and we're talking and my phone goes off and I'm like, we can't even hunt without getting a phone call from these <laughs> yeah, guys. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's that just, time of year. And it's it's that time awesome. of year. So. I hope the phone calls continue. I hope that the viewers are having great hunts. Weather does not look perfect. It's not like last year, man. Definitely a lot of rain. I, one thing that was interesting, never see it get below 32 degrees for like the next 14 days. Right. At least forecasted. So, I mean, yeah. It's, yeah. it's also at least not getting into the 70s, which – so it's just kind of a lot of middle-of-the-road stuff, which hopefully it's not super suppressed, but it's also not going to be – 
yep. you know, uh, really facilitated by it. But would you change anything with all the rain in your approach? Just I, I've been someone I've always enjoyed hunting in the rain. I mean, I've killed a lot of bucks in the rain. I, uh, camera, camera gear, especially the last couple of years. I'm like, okay, I've ruined enough camera gear that I'm like trying to stop taking people out in thunderstorms. Um, a light drizzle, man, it's hard to beat a light drizzle, a light rain. Um, but I've killed some, I've killed some bucks right after a big thunderstorm rolls through too. So, I mean, it's not comfortable per se, but I definitely wouldn't let it slow me down. I mean, I obviously, I take my days off of work way in advance and I get my days that week to hunt and I'm like rain or shine or hell or wind or whatever, let's go hunt. And I'm, I'm, I guess I'm getting a little softer as I get older and I care more about my happiness of my camera guys and all this kind of stuff where maybe I'll, <laughs> maybe I'll put a second thought into it, but I, uh, we'll see. We'll see. We'll the, see. The yeah. evolution of Mike in 2021 to 2024. I mean, it's yeah. went like this. It, I'm it just happened. picturing Rye over there being like, mm. and I'll just say, Rye, I'll just say like 2000 to 2021 was all <laughs> balls to the wall the same and then the last few years i'm like okay okay you know i'm like that old buck i'm just my knees are hurting but um but yeah no anyway it's good it's it's uh i w- i would definitely tell people don't be afraid of rain i mean obviously there's some interesting facets of rain i mean i think right when rain ends there's a lot of activity you talk about like bucks refreshing scent signposts and things like that you know and and all these kinds of things that you would expect a little increase in activity with some of that stuff just because they're trying to make sure their territory is known um i mean fr- from a safety standpoint obviously high winds and, and lightning maybe don't go get in a tree but mm-hmm. be ready to be ready to yeah <laughs> uh, i think you, one of the things you hit that's definitely going to be interesting to watch unfold is how quick the foil has changed i mean yeah. it's some people it's gonna hurt for sure and i mean in our property i think it helped us because now we can actually see a decent yeah. amount uh, without the tree we're in doesn't have fantastic cover anyway we're, we're, we're relying on the backdrop so um i'm excited to see what you guys get into good luck in the morning gavin congrats again dude thanks for everything you do for us you yeah do a lot. thank you guys you man uh, gavin you yes man. sir yeah good have luck to you guys time. yeah we'll let you know how it goes and until then, just if you guys are listening here, our, our video schedule. So tomorrow morning, uh, we've got Owen Riegler's first Iowa buck and then Justin Redeker's Kansas buck. Nolan was with them in the tree. Uh, supposed to go up tonight. Rye ran some technical difficulties. Amanda, did he cover every possible hotspot in southern Iowa to try to get that video uploaded? So I want to say thank you, Rye, for the effort. And Poor it guy. just happens sometimes, man. You know, nothing to stress out about. So that'll go tomorrow morning. Uh, We've got Devin's giant buck, his biggest buck ever at some point, hopefully this coming week. Uh, Excuse me, skipped over Gavin's. Yours will probably be on Monday. And then Devin's will come after that. And then somewhere after that, Owens. I mean, it's stacking up again. It's not quite like last year where there's three or four a day, it seems like. But (laughs) there's still a lot of tags out there. Yep. So... Appreciate you guys if you're listening. Appreciate it if you're watching any of the videos. And November is chugging on. Definitely doesn't feel like November 1st. I don't know about you guys, but I feel like it's November 30th right now. I'm just so <laughs> tired. Um, but we'll get this thing turned around. Keep on cranking. Best month of the year. And it'll be over before we know it. So good luck out there. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys feel attacked.